Hey everyone, I'm Noreen Queen Alexis and welcome back to the channel. <clears throat> and welcome back to this the the, the 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 thing that we are doing called the Lore the Discussion. Lord, yes, the Lore Discussion series. <laughs> we are on book number three in the Psychic Awakening series, Blood of Baal, where the Tyranids go ball deep into <laughs> the Blood Angels territory. What is their yeah, yeah. overall goal? What are they after? So Joining me, as always, is Vicky the GM. I don't know what the Tyranids are up to, but it makes the blood of my balls boil. God damn it. Look, if she gets to make lewd and awful jokes, I get to, too. Yeah, but you bring another step further. Yeah. Well, anyway, also joining me today me. is White. Since I am here, supposedly. I don't believe you. Yeah. yeah. So, John is not going to be joining us today. The he's Mega too, he's busy camp. doing freedom. He's doing freedom. Yeah. He's working the polls. He yeah. is working the polls. So the legendary <laughs> Mega Primark Captain Jono stuff stealer poll worker. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, you have that image in your head now. I know I got a poll. You're welcome. So, with that all being said, let's jump right into this with one of the coolest quotes ever. And Vicky, take it away. I can feel them getting closer. It has been months since my subductor Majoris laughed that barking laugh of hers in my face. I had made no sense, I freely admit. Vague premonitions were all I had. The sound of slow drips. The feel of undulating movement. A golden light too distant to offer comfort. How does one communicate a nameless dread? Emperor, forgive me, but I am scared. Even now, after so many nights pumped full of stims, my body breaking down through lack of sleep, I feel it drawing nearer. Maybe if my security detail allowed me to sleep, to recover, I could make sense of it. But then I might dream. I can't endure another dream like the last one. One more nightmare leaking out of the cicatrix maledictum, the subductor Majoris had sneered. I wonder why she hadn't seen it herself. Maybe she hadn't, maybe she had and was afraid. She should be. We should all be. I have felt the scratching in my head, felt the caress of something slick in my mind, testing, questing. The spreading darkness is before me now, even without sleep. It builds into a thunderhead of shadow. It pulls into oceans of black ink. I see the candles of worlds illuminated by the minds of my brothers and sisters, first dim and then extinguished. It's curious. Many of the flames swell, their light too bright, before the shadow reaches them. Locked here in my warded and sanctified quarters awaiting censure, I cannot tell whether or not what I have seen is some echo of the future, some portent of abominable terror. I pray my jailers will tire of my existence before long. Personal Journal of Keisha Anaguru, Subductor Astropathicus Minoris, Thyrean Relay Station. So that's a really cool passage because it shows that the Tyranids are starting to infect her mind without barely being in the system. Yeah, mm. she's feeling the effects of the shadow and the warp up ahead of everyone else, it seems. Mm-hmm. Or perhaps yeah. the gene stealer cult is actually there affecting her. If it's an astropathic, really, it's probably in space, so space. maybe, maybe not. Mm, gene stealer do... cults work in mysterious ways, but yeah. Yeah. All right, then uh, do we go to the introduction or just skip to the Red Feast? Let's skip to the Red Feast, because that sounds cool. All right, sweet. A Red Feast. When the Great Devourer turned its galaxy-spanning hunger to the Imperial star system scattered throughout the Red Scar, the Blood Angels stood in their path. The Sons of Sanguinius resisted the Xenos tirelessly, fighting not only to safeguard Imperial space, but defend their homeworld of Baal itself, for the chapter's very survival was at stake. Isn't their homeworld Baal Secundus? Yep, it's Baal Secundus. All right. But it's the premier planet of the ball sector. <clears throat> ah. Choo choo, here comes the heresy, heresy train. But it's, um, this takes place after the devastation of ball, where the yes, Tyranids first attacked. 
So this is a Tyranid attack too, Electric Boogaloo. Well, actually, Redhead, it starts out with just recounting the devastation of Ball, and then it just talks about what the Blood Angels were up to afterwards. Most of the book actually doesn't even take place on Ball, it's silly. What? Mm, that's, that's dumb. That's like the last book where they're like, yeah, it's sisters versus this. Actually, it's not. The sisters are just there. Mm. Yeah. All right. I have a habit of well, doing that with these books. Yeah, they, uh, it's about one thing, but, ah, joke's on you. Yeah, you think you're getting a book about Sisters of Battle. JK, here's some Alpha Legion talking down to Night Lords. The Alpha mm. Legion didn't even show up last time. Oh yeah, they were just featured in the art. Yeah, yeah. what the hell? Like, they weren't, like, in, you know, like, the list of forces involved. Like, even Vigilists said they were there, they just didn't know how many were there. That's dumb. It is, but we're, we're free of that now. Now we just have good old, uh, good old Blood Angels and, and, and Spooky Bugs. Yes. Happy-go-lucky Space Bugs. Heck yeah. Moving on. Mm-hmm. By giving a name to the Myriad Tyranid incursions, the Ordo Xenos believed they understood them. The Hive Fleet, codenamed Leviathan, was recorded ravaging sectors through the Galactic South. Yet invasions by creatures exhibiting similar colorations and tendencies struck at isolated sectors all over the galaxy. Ooh. In reality, in reality, Leviathan's tendrils attack from beneath the Galactic Plane, unlike the other Hive Fleets known to mankind. Regions could gain no advance warning of attack by monitoring this high fleet serpentine course. Questing shoals of hungering bioships appeared seemingly at random from the frozen emptiness beyond the galaxy. In this way, many bio rich worlds of the Red Scar were scoured of life before the Imperium could muster any defense. That is a really cool paragraph. That yeah. is. Because, like, Okay, so it is a little bit silly that they're essentially saying the Tyranids are attacking from under the universe. Well, it's under the galaxy. It, yeah, it makes sense, because, like, if they're, you know, coming from outside the galaxy, why would they always be at the edge if they can just come from a different angle? That is true. Yeah, because the galaxy in, like, super macro detail is a flat disk. Like, with that logic, they could just pop up at Terra. That's true. That's a horrifying thought. It yeah. is. Although, hasn't, didn't, like, old art depict Leviathan coming up from the galactic, like, beneath yep. the galactic plane? Yeah, that's, that's kind of them just reinforcing lip, just how spooky that is. So it's interesting that we get uh, patterns of the Tyranid attacks being actually mentioned in the lore. I do like that. That is good. It is it fits with existing fluff? My God, they've learned to turn at a ninety-degree angle. Oh no! They <gasps> figure out the z-axis. Run, run! The Tyranids are evolving too much. I'm still confused how Tyranids can even be a, a threat to the galaxy when they can't even do faster than light travel. Hmm. I mean, they don't have to. Yeah, but they just show up. Yeah, I mean, they came from outside the galaxy, and it took them 10,000 years to get here. It would take a lot longer than that for a ship that can't move faster than light, but yeah, we're not going to get into that. Yeah. Right. Like, it would take 10,000 years for them to get from Pluto to Earth. I remember the term light year. If you, they're not even moving the speed of light, they're kind of screwed. Yeah. I don't even know how they like escape because it's just like if they can't um if they can't actually break light speed, then every ship in the Imperium should be able to keep up with them. Considering that in the Mechanicum Omnibus they tell you that the ships of the Imperium are capable of doing FTL, they just choose not to because warp travel is faster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a little bit more of... spooky, but it's faster and more reliable. Well, it's reliable, too. Yeah, they usually use the, like, slightly 
Uh, wait, oh, yeah, they usually use the FTL for inter-system stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, next, next paragraph. Yeah. The red scar flares like an angry wheel. Whale? Wheel? I don't whale. know what that word means. Whale? They're having a whale of the... a good time. Having a wonderful time. Okay, the red scars. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, apparently it's pronounced well. Well, okay. Yeah. The red scars flare. Uh, the red scar flares like an angry whale over the hollow charts of the Oreo Astra. Its thousands of stars all shine a shade of crimson, tinting the worlds and gas clouds of the region with a color of spilt blood. Each system is that cursed is so, with ferocious so radiation edgy. emitted by these scarlet suns, and life there is exceptionally hard. But the Imperium never shirks from harsh conditions when there are valuable resources to acquire. Though billions die to embed permanent settlements, hundreds of the Red Scar systems eventually rang to the noise of human industry beneath the ruddy stars. Yep, just, you know, billion people here, billion people there, whatever, just, just do it. So that is probably the most edgy paragraph I think I've ever heard. The like, sky it, is a It bathes the, the surface in blood. <laughs> blood. I'm sorry, that's a that's a little bit much. Like I, I get I get having red blood. light, but damn. Yeah, it's <laughs> settle in, kids. We're just getting started with the edge. The color of spilt blood. Like, much how awkward it would have been if the blood angel tried to system, you know. I'd like a blue star or something. I mean, well, think about think about this. It, th this makes the blood angels perfectly camouflaged on these worlds. God damn it! Well, like when they say spilt blood, what color of blood do they mean? Because spilt blood gets heavily oxygenated and could be a bright red, or depending on the oxygen in the world, it could actually be a darker red. Yeah. Might be bright red for the sake of blood angels. Yeah, let's let's for the sake of uh, for the sake of imagination, imagine they are exactly the same color as the blood angels. Oh my god! You just have to pick out the nipples to shoot the blood angels. <laughs> don't don't fire until you see their nipple armor. Don't fire until oh. you see the tips of their nipples. By then, it's <laughs> already too late. Oh no. <laughs> All right, let's continue. All right. The tendril of High Fleet Leviathan that found its way through and around the Red Scar was but a single proboscis of the gestalt organism that emerged from the intergalactic void. Nonetheless, it consisted of a number of hive ships the Imperium had ever recorded. One curling spur of Leviathan's presence in the Red Scar would later be termed the Cryptoid Tendril, for in its path were the shield worlds of Cryptus. This populous binary system was just one of countless territories threatened by the Tyranids, which the Imperium took decisive steps to defend. So, huh. that's all well and good. Yeah, Wasn't greatest a... number. Oh, go ahead. Just you know, like the whole greatest number of hype ships the Imperium had ever recorded. So it, that that's a lot of buggies. That is a lot of buggies. How did they record them? Look, the Order of Xenos probably has some people just standing there going, uh, all right, we're done now. Good. Well, Boom. That's not crazy to... Well, then I... Like, you know, they show up in places, you count them. Like, I know that they're probably just using manned drone ships to count them, but still... Oh, I mean, by the way, servitor-driven drone ships actually exist in the Imperium. You can read about them in uh, the Garrow novels. Huh. Oh, yeah, yeah they do sh show up there. Yeah, because they intercept Garrow, and they're like, what the hell are you doing here? That's true. Yeah, it's probably just a bunch of uh, listening posts which scan the space and can count buggies. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Vital for its refined Prometheum and advanced solar energy arrays, Cryptus received reinforcement from several Astra Militarum regiments and other Imperial forces. 
guardsmen, tanks, and even a mission of battle sisters were sacrificed to defend cryptids. Of course, uh, quick the pause. How much is a mission of sisters? Uh, like about 10,000. 10,000. I thought that was a preceptory. No, a preceptory is 100,000. Oh, or right. no. Hang on. It goes. Uh, I'm not sure about that. It goes 1,000, 10,000, 100,000 is the entire order. I think that's just one canoness and her bodyguards. Mm, wouldn't a mission be at like a thousand then? A mission includes actually. Let me check the codex. I can I can do this right now. I yeah, have I am right really. Next to me. I am really curious how much like just for sense of scale. Like how many sisters is this? Is this how many just... sisters did they slaughter? <laughs> yeah. Shit. So how many sisters? <laughs> oh my god, we we measure. <laughs> Just how much the stakes are being raised by the number of sisters killed. By the number Oof. of Ben Counters writing. <laughs> so on the scale of uh, one to a hundred thousand, how many Ben Counters do you give this book? Uh, so you said one no. perceptor? Uh, one, one mission. mission. One mission. Okay. Second mission. First mission. So that includes five squads of so sisters. That's... So that's what fifty. Uh, that they have up to fifteen in a squad. So it contains a Palantine. Uh, she's the commander. It contains an Amagafire and Celestian bodyguards, and then five sisters, uh, five sister squads, fifteen in each. So that is forty-five. Uh, fifty. Seventy-five. Seventy-five sisters. Hmm. Nice. That's, that's actually not that many. That yeah, is not so. that many. So I, I hereby christen the uh, <laughs> the number of sisters killed per story. Uh, the measurement scale is the Ben counter. Well, ha. <laughs> I have to say that all the tension has been broken. If that's the only number of sisters they're killing, why should I even care? I know. Yeah, we, we need at least 10,000 sisters dead before we can consider this a grim dark story. Look, I don't even get out of bed for less than 50,000 dead sisters, okay? You know what? Oof. Screw it. Just kill the entire emperor while we're at it. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's, Jokes let's aside, let's keep going. But one by one, the system's worlds were overcome. When Cryptus' signal reached Ball, the shield world struggle was already known to Commander Dante, chapter master of the Blood Angels. Whether the system stood or fell, the Tyranids would inexorably advance upon the chapter's homeworld of Baal. But if the Xenos could be made to bleed enough at Cryptus, then maybe Baal stood a chance. Mm. Yay! Dante is on things. Things are great. Dante is yeah. a really cool character, by the way. He is. Also, he's not as old as I thought he was. I thought he was 1100. He's anywhere, depending on the story and when the story takes place, he's anywhere from 700 to 1200. That's pretty old, though. Yeah, but, like, rookie dreadnoughts are older than him. Yeah, but he's not in a dreadnought. So the fact that he lived as the chapter master, like, well, going up through the chapter, going all the way up through the chapter and didn't get dreadnoughted, that's pretty Look, impressive. I'm just going to sit here imagining him being just an, an old dude telling the Tyranus to get off his damn lawn. Oh my god, he's... Uh, what's that guy from Gran Torino? That's essentially him. Oh no. Oh no, uh, in, the, in the movie, Dante will be played by... I'm blanking on his name too. No. Clint Eastwood. Yeah, Clint, Clint Eastwood, there we go, yes. I'd be okay imagine with that. If... That actually sounds like a badass character to play him. <laughs> sounds pretty cool. However, imagine if... He had, has the helmet on the entire movie, and it's just Clint Eastwood for no reason under there. No, it would be Clint Eastwood being Clint Eastwood, doing Clint Eastwood things. Heck yeah. But, uh, All right. jokes aside, I want if they ever do an Overwatch movie, I want Clint Eastwood to play Soldier 76. Nah, so 76 isn't that old. Well, here's the thing. One of 76's voice lines is, damn punks, get off my lawn. Yep. All right, uh, stay on topic. All right. all right, on topic. Focus. All right. The Blood Angels pushed back the Sinos at Cryptus with furious assault, but the unending waves of Tyranids pouring into each battle zone threatened to grind the Sons of Sanguinius down. 
It was then that the war upon the shield worlds woke their ancient inhabitants, the Necrons, bum, 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 whose tomb had orbited the binary stars for eons, unknown to the Imperium. Okay, it was the only best a... friends are ready to fight. Yeah, it was only a very pact made with these fleshless aliens that saw Cryptus's worlds finally fenced of Tyranids, though at great cost. Oh, this is that. Yeah, this is that story, which Holy is terrific. Crap. The fact Not that they the mention uh, the 5th edition Necron story is great. But keep in mind, yeah. they did rewrite everything from that story and made it have a lot more sense. And yeah. 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 So the current iteration of that story is that Dante... Uh, who's the tank commander again? Uh, who's the Blood Angels tank commander? I forget. Did I cannot have... remember who else went, but I know as Dante looked at the Silent King, the Silent King offered a treaty to him. The Silent King was wearing the death mask of Sanguinius, and he yeah. was all like, he... "How dare you?" And he's like, and... "It's okay. I'm cool with your chapter mat with your uh, your Primark. Duke, your Primarch." And they're all like, "Nah." -uh. He's all like, "Hey, we're gonna help you out." Dante brought a freaking rhino filled with a cyclonic torpedo. To kill all of them, they didn't need to use it. They fought against the Tyranids, Necrons fought against the Tyranids, and Necrons took off to go and fight the Tyranids in space. And they dealt with them on the ground, but they were planning to betray the Necrons, but the Necrons pulled a fast one on them and left them behind. Yeah, it uh it was a whole bunch of it was it was a space poker where the where this uh where the uh, Silent King called Dante's bluff. Um, and they also put it in the record as a Blood Angel victory where they destroyed the Necrons. Yeah. And they even they even mentioned it at the end of the story that, yeah, let's just not talk about this too much. Yeah. I mean, would you? I mean, if Matt Ward wrote my story, then no, I wouldn't want to talk about it. <laughs> Oof. Originally, it was written by Matt Ward, but it was taken over by, I think, Phil? Yeah, I think Phil Kelly wrote that. Maybe. Yeah, when he did the short story for it. Yeah, he, to be fair, Phil is much, much better at grand storytelling. Yeah, not the best that yeah. they have, but pretty good. Yeah, like, it's it, it gets the job done. Yeah. Yeah, all right, moving on. The surviving Blood Angels now made for Baal. Knowing the homeworld was at risk, Dante issued a summons to as many Blood Angels successor chapter as could be reached. Gee, it's Companies. almost like they have the Legion protocols. Yeah, like the Dark Angels and the Imperial Fists. Hmm, go figure. Companies from almost every one of them answered the call. As the High Fleet drew nearer, the planet was fortified as it had not been for millennia. Even the able-bodied amongst its tribes people were armed and stationed throughout the system. Many within its fortress, uh, many, uh, many within the fortress monastery upon Baal itself. Dante hoped it would be enough, for when the tyrannids of High Fleet Leviathan descended on Baal, their approaching bioships obscured, by the, uh, obscured the ruby stain of the red scars with their numbers. And apparently a laugh track took off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's, there's laughing in the background. But... I'm super happy that the tribes people on Baal are getting mentioned because they're a bunch of uh, rad mutants. Well, not mutants. They they survive barely. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, that's cool. All right. Wait, we're all, uh, oh, this is wait. Uh, what oh, are we waiting mind. for? The is this is the devastation of Baal, right? Recapping yes. that. All right. Okay. Let's go. The it, Ravens. Like, I, oh, go it's kind of like a phoenix rising. It starts out with just the early stuff and then catches up to modern lore. Yeah. I was wondering to myself, wait, we're already getting into this and like there's not much like meat to the story. But then I realized, yeah, let's let's keep going. The ravening swarms fell upon Baal like a deluge. A flood of teeth and chitin poured towards the firing space marines as the air became a toxic soup of alien spores and caustic rain. One after another, the Blood Angels' carefully layered defenses were overcome by weeks of savage fighting. Amidst the relentless tumult, 
Tyranid invasion rapidly adapted its tactics, heedless of the thousands of beasts lost every moment. As defenses fell to infiltrator organisms, fresh swarms poured forth to meet the blazing guns of the Blood Angels. It was then that the galaxy itself screamed. Ree. Ree. Was heard throughout the galaxy. My god. My god. Also, so this is. So it is cool that they are dating the uh, devastation of Ball, right? Oh, hold on. I'm here, Beam. Okay, yeah, yeah, but like. Uh, basically, it happened, you know, around the time that the Great Rift. Yeah, like just yeah. before it, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, it helps, you know, explain why the, you know, the Blood Angels didn't help out Acadia other than being on the other side of the galaxy from it. Yeah. Although in Battlefleet Gothic, they do explain what, they do explain the devastation of Ball pretty well. Ooh, really? Yeah, when you play the, when you play the storyline mission, when you finally see Blood Angels, they mm -hmm. go, we're on the other side of the galaxy fighting Tyranids. Yeah, that's basically what this book is all about. Yep. So it's actually pretty cool to to have uh, Nids being, you know, a big threat again because let's let's face it, Tyranids are not really the big yeah. bad guy of 40k because they kind of get beaten no matter what. Yeah, they are basically a faction of Avatar of Cain syndrome. Yeah, where it's like they'll kill a bunch, but I guarantee in this book they won't kill a single named character. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it, they're Tyranids after all. They're just the generic bad guy. Which is kind of a shame when you think about it, because you have these characters that could be, like, super important and super powerful, but they kind of leave them to Saturday morning cartoon villainy. Yeah, that that's quite the trend in 40k. Yeah, where the background factions are just, they're there! Mm-hmm. But the real story of 40k is strictly chaos versus the Imperium. I mean, we we gotta we gotta face that at some point. The rule book had an eagle tangling with the snake. Yep. Which I think is really cool imagery. Yes. Like it's it's quite literally some of the coolest stuff. Yeah. Tells you not to side at the Imperium because they are trying to step on Snick. Look, that Snick had it coming. From the Eye of Terror to the Eastern Fringe, the Great Rift tore the galaxy asunder, and mankind's realm was divided. Warp storms ravaged many of the Imperium's traumatized survivors, and the Ball system was not spared, becoming caught in a roiling gale of energy. Clustered in orbit like predators around a dying animal, the Tyranid hive ships had been lashed mercilessly. When the Blood Angels were next able to focus their augurs heavenward, the Xeno ships had vanished. Bam, bam, bam. That's, That's convenient. Con yeah. Yeah. I want. Oh wait, no, no, because at the end of um, Devastation of Ball, remember when the demons show up? Yes. So... And they start fighting off the Tyranids. So that's a reference to that. Yeah, it's this is sort of a reference. Hey, uh, oh yeah, by the way, this demon showed up because the uh, because the great rift opened up. Yeah, Lucifer. I mean, Cabanda, the one that fights yeah. Saint Michael. I mean, Sanguinius. Whatever. Definitely Saint... not Saint Michael. It it's Saint Michael. It it is. With very prominent right. nipples. Very, very prominent nipples. Look, nipples. Blood Angels are only as strong as their nipples. This is true. Like, originally yeah. they just make their breastplate flat. It's their nipples just make them appear. Mm-hmm. Alrighty, let's, uh, let's continue. Let's get off the topic of nipples. Yeah, and move, move further down. Upon Baal, continent-spanning swarms of monstrosities and scuttling weapon beasts remained, reverting now to their more bestial instincts. The Blood Angels did not understand what had occurred in orbit, but sensed a chance to regain the initiative, now that the Tyranid hordes on Baal were severed from the star-spanning intelligence directing them. The Xenos did not fall back before the Blood Angels' counter-assault. However, but instead flung themselves forward with greater hunger and ferocity. So that is just them 
Tyrion do anything. Also, apparently there was a cat in my room. Hold on. <laughs> Tyranids doing Tyranid things. Hey, our, yeah. our main beasts are gone. Yeah, but this is 8th edition now. We don't care. Yeah. I remember 6th and 7th edition um, instincts. They were so yeah. bad. Like, bad in what way? Uh, you would run to a terrain piece and you couldn't move off of it. You'd run off huh. the table. Like, you would actually take your models and run them all the way back until they fell off the table and they would be removed. Huh. Um, they would attack the nearest enemy regardless. Uh, even if they couldn't hurt it. Because in earlier editions, there were, like, Strength 3 couldn't hurt Toughness 7. Mm -hmm. So if you ran into a vehicle with heavy armor, you couldn't do anything to it. So that was fun. Playing yeah, Tyranids in earlier editions was just like... You're playing the losers. Oh. Like, you were just... You were going to lose. It was just how long you could hold out before you lose. That's what it felt like. Damn. Well, let's keep reading on and see how, it, uh, how they'd lose this time. I, I gotta <laughs> run off for a sec. Be right back. Yep. All right. I'll just read the final bit in the thing. Oh, goddamn. You might want to pause, babe. The Blood Angels teetered on the brink of extinction. Though the hive ships were gone, the ball system's world still teemed with Xenos. It was but one of thousands in Warzone Ball, which encompassed the Red Scar and its fringes. Within each one, the Tyranids swarmed and feasted. So, and then we have a really cool piece of art for Baal and its binary sons. A big old map. And so, yes. It's interesting that they, they switched up the original ending to Devastation of Baal with this book. Because originally they pushed back the Tyranids in one. And now it's like, no, they they were pretty much all dead. So no, it's basically they lost their synapse. No, no, no. I'm talking about the Blood Angels. Like, they they are oh. crippled. So... Okay, gotta, gotta get them Primaris reinforcements. Well, yeah, it shows that the... that they desperately needed the Primaris Marines. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's... Yeah. It's interesting that, like... I don't know. I kind of do wish the Tyranids got a few victories. But at the same time, I know the devastating cost of having Tyranids win. But I do wish that they would wipe out a couple of Space Marine chapters that are not important. Like the Red Scorpions, the... I don't know, the, the Forge World chapters that don't need to exist. Actually, the Red Scorpions, they're, they're whatever. Um, but like things like the Star Phantoms, the Nova Marines. Those guys should be wiped out by Tyranids. Yeah. Yeah, just throw some successor chapter at them and have that be that. Like Angel's Redemption. Nobody knows about them. Oh, uh, to be fair, the Scythes of the Emperor did get wiped out by they, the Tyranids. They got wiped out down to five people. And then those five people died thanks to a gene stealer patriarch, so that's a Tyranid Hive Fleet win. Yeah, but they were all replaced by Primaris. Yeah, but they weren't true uh, emperor, uh, sides of the Emperor. Not really. Yeah, they just got wiped out then replaced. Yeah, then some other guys from Mars got a paint scheme. Boom, you're sides of the Emperor now. Congrats, it's like the Imperial Fist. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But it is, uh -huh. it is pretty cool. Like, I, I do like it, I do like it. Alright, let's All continue. Right. Duties demand. The Blood Angels battling the Tyranids on Baal were faced with the possibility of utter destruction. Yet the opening of the Great Rift brought salvation unlooked for. As the Tyranids fought on with savage instincts, a figure from another time swept out of the tortured warp with reinforcements and dolorous tidings. Hmm, who could that be? I wonder, I wonder. Uh, should I read the quote from... Mm -hmm. All right. Our light shall not gutter out beneath this shroud of blackness. These Xenos filth will not prevail. I vow to you, all of you, who share the angel's noble blood. 
We will cast down these beasts. We will sunder their hosts, for their end has come. Commander Dante, Lord of the Angelic Host. I'm just trying to figure out between Dante and Gilliman who's the bitter old man in that conversation. I would say it's Dante. Gilliman's kind of like the young guy who's just in command. Yeah, I mean, he's been in stasis for most of 10,000 years. He's... I wonder if Rubuti in, like, uh, galactic years, like, in relative time, is younger than Dante. No. Uh, I wonder if mm, Rubuti is younger than Dante. Maybe. Like, how how yeah, long was the Great Crusade? 200 years. Oh, Okay. And then the mm. Siege of Terror is only a hundred years at most. Uh, no, the the Horus Heresy only takes seven years, and the Siege itself takes like a like half a year to complete. Hmm. Yeah, and that's because Angron ruined the whole thing. I mean, yeah, that's beside the point. But okay. if, like, I forget how long the Scouring takes and how long Gilliman is alive until Fulgrim gets him... But he, he then gets put into stasis. Then Indomitus Crusade happens. So there's a good well, chance that Dante is like 100, 200 years older relative to Gilliman. Yeah, yeah. At most, okay, we know the Legion Wars took place uh, about 1 to 100, like within 100 years after the the Great Crusade. And yeah. bef- no, after um, that's, after the that's War of the this. Beast. No, that's but bef- no, uh, Gilman is gone at War of the Beast, which is yeah. After so Beast we too. know that he didn't last that long. So we know that he died yeah. during the Legion Wars, but it uh, was al- during those Legion as- Wars when Fulgrim was still active and then became part of the Great Game. Yeah, which uh, the Scouring is. Yeah, you're you're referencing that. Yes. Well, the Scouring and the Legion Wars are the same thing based on whose perspective. The Legion Wars is Chaos's perspective. The Scouring is the Imperial perspective because the Imperials believe that they did all the work when in reality the Emperor's children were literally torturing and killing every space marine that they saw. Right. They, uh, once they fled back into the eye... It was mostly just them, uh, the Emperor's children, killing They everyone. didn't flee into the Eye. They pursued the Sons of Horus. That, too. It Never probably kind of depends on who you ask. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Moving on. The Blood Angels and their successors fought for the world of Baal with sharpened blades and blazing bolt fire. Where ammunition ran dry or combat knives were blunted, they lashed out with kicks and punches. Enhanced musculature and hardened ceramite were pitted against snapping maws and raking talons. At stake was the survival of the entire system. Baal's mortal citizens fought too, for they knew that no mercy could be expected from the Tyranids. All believed it would be Baal's final hour, and they fought with the fury of those with nothing left to lose. All right, so all I can imagine is like, uh, you see Old One-Eye, and Old One-Eye grabs a Marine. The Marine tries to stab Old One-Eye's claw, breaks his knife. Old One-Eye brings him closer before snapping him in half, and the dude just punches Old One-Eye in the face. Like, I'm just imagine the Marine being all like, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> Or just punching out a, like, you have a, you have a, a, a freaking, um... A Tyranid warrior. It has its swords and it has its devourer underneath it. And it's like lashing out at the space marines. And then here comes Sergeant freaking uh, Clarence to punch it in the face. I do like that they keep mentioning how just the normal humans are fighting with the Blood Angels, which they usually don't get mentioned that often. Well, that's what I'm interested in. Like, I want to know about the the um, Imperial Guard regiments uh, associated with them, while the Imperial Navy regiments associated with the Blood Angels, and see what they're doing. But they're probably not going to be mentioned at all. True. Yeah, the Navy probably won't get mentioned here. All right, moving on. Beyond the spore-choked skies, the Tyranid bioships in orbit had been brutally swept into oblivion by the warp storms that roiled in the wake of the Great Rift. 
In their place, the turbulent void miraculously disgorged a new fleet. Approaching Baal, the incoming ships transmitted Imperial identifiers to the Blood Angels, revealing that they hailed from Terra. But the chrono idents were so corrupted that Baal's logisticians could ascertain no fixed origin time. These were the ships of the Indomitus Crusade, the immense force which was spreading out from Terra to reclaim and defend mankind's dominion. They found the Blood Angels' position on Baal's surface to be steadily contracting before the encircling Tyranid swarms. The ships unloaded searing barrages of macrocannon shells into the Xenos to stall their advance, before releasing wings of attack craft and countless dropships. The warriors they carried were primary space marines, who owed their genesis to the far-reaching tactical acumen of Rubuti Gilliman, and it was none other than the Avenging Sun himself who now coordinated the Imperial attack. Woo! Kill nowhere. That booty kill a man. <laughs> Reboot kill a man with a steel chair. Okay, out of nowhere. The Tyranids. We snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Oof. <gasps> ah. Oh, poor guys. No. Poor guys. All right. <clears throat> Clad in the colors of the Blood Angels, the Flash Terrors, and other chapters of Sanguinius' line, the incoming waves of Adeptus Astartes' warriors inspired the depleted defenders to resurgence acts of savagery. Many Imperial lives were lost as defenders and crusaders hammered the Tyranids away from their lines. However, after days of battle, the combined Imperial armies stilled the aliens' impetus half across the planet, giving the Blood Angels breathing room to consolidate. Gathering for the first time since the battle for Baal had commenced, Dante and the other chapter masters formally accepted the Primaris reinforcements and the arcane technology required to create more. Only Gabriel Seth of the Flesh Terrors harbored reservations about the gift's implications, but his warriors had been impressed with those Primaris space marines who fought in their livery. Interesting, but not completely out of character for Gabriel Seth to be just completely uh, an unlikable a-hole. Yeah. yeah like, like, a lot of people still, like, you're trying to act like the Flesh Terrors don't use primary space marines, even though, like, later in this book, there's a whole scene of primary Flesh Terrors fighting stuff, but also, all the way back in the Death Watch Codex, when it's just showing off the models, it shows a Primaris flesh terror apothecary so yeah there you like, go. like that's the thing like gabriel seth being the 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 douchebag that he is he probably yeah he wasn't fully accepting at first kind of like how the dark angels weren't fully accepting at first but they still took them yeah well, like how this paragraph reads like you know how he harbored the reservation but his warriors are impressed by them it sounds like you know he started like, you know, grumbling and ranting about it, but the rest of the Flesh Terrors just didn't care. Yeah, the rest probably. of the Flesh Terrors are probably like, yay, brothers! Woo, we're not gonna die out, yay! You know, Seth is like, I wanted to die out, damn it! Damn you, I just wanted to die for the Emperor, damn it! <laughs> Alright, moving on. Gilliman shared with the chapter masters the terrible tidings of the Great Rift and its consequences for humanity. Even as many of these leaders stared at him, struck by the presence of one hailing from a time of legend, Gilliman concluded by appointing Commander Dante as regent of Imperium Nihilus, a responsibility though both deeply humbling in its honor and immeasurably weighty in its magnitude. With swarms remaining upon, upon the homeworld and its sister planets, the future of Baal was by no means secure. Yet Gilliman's fleet made preparations to move on, for there were regions whose peril was far greater. The Sons of Sanguinius now drew plans for a counteroffensive to cleanse the rest of the system. So, yes, here, uh, this is the part where Dante gets named as regent of Nihilus, uh, where uh, Azrael gets to be... The other one, uh, the flip side of the re coin. Re regent of Imperium Sanctus, which is the uh, solar side of mm -hmm. the uh, Great Rift. Which which is cool, and this is all... This is just still setting the scene. I wonder if they're going to spend a lot of paragraphs on, and this is how long it took to clean up Baal. Oh, like, that's what the rest of the story is about. 
Oh boy. It's, wow, it's that's big, it. It's a cleanup operation. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Like they, like there's some other like little plot twist that happened, but that's basically what the story's about. Alright. Let's let's keep going then. Revitalized by reinforcements and fresh purpose, Dante and the commanders of the successor chapter struck out from positions that have nearly uh, that had nearly been the site of their doom. Strike forces assembled by the surviving allies swept forward to rid Baal of Tyranid hordes. The Blood Angels were determined to capitalize on the creature's severed link to the hive mind, not knowing how quickly it would be re knitted. Weeks of further bloodshed ensued, and Baal's already battle torn deserts were churned to mud as they became soaked with blood and ichor. The Tyranid dead piled high to form a stinking, unending bloodscape. Wow, calm down on the edge there, boys. Bloodscape, that's quite the I word. Back up so numb, I can't feel you. <laughs> hmm, I wonder if in uh, if on Baal there is a profession called a uh, professional bloodscaper. Okay, yeah, bloodscape is a made-up word. I had to check. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. Uh, oh, jeez. I mean, uh, a space marine with his chainsaw just, you know, trimming slightly off the top of, of his bloodscaping uh, project. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, let's continue. Uh, the might of the primary space marines was proved beyond question in these battles, and in the uh, and the Blood Angels wasted no time in beginning to muster further waves of this new breed of warriors. Many of the young tribesmen who had bravely defended Baal were remade as Primaris, Mar uh, Primaris Space Marines. All right, that's their... cool. That yeah. is pretty cool. Having proved their worth ten times over during the horrific invasion, they were not the only ones to undergo transformation, for the Blood Angel's sinister chief librarian, Mephiston, undertook the dangerous crossing of the Rubicon Primaris. I... Isn't but it, it's... like, slightly redundant to add sinister to Mephiston's description yeah considering what his name actually means yeah i mean he holds the title of lord of death i don't think you need to add that like tiny little uh suffix okay. or and no prefix we just, just talk about like not only his name and being called sinister aside but like how most art and his model you know shows him being like you know starling vampire man but in the cover of the book he just looks like i don't know like just calm smiling should probably be wearing sunglasses. Lacking <laughs> in nipples. Yeah, he doesn't have nipples on the front cover. For some Whee! reason. But his model has nipples. Look, yeah, he's only, he only has nipples when he activates his psychic nipples. He has to maintain his psychic nipples. Like that's how he does weed this thing, Quinius. Nipple, he nipple. Can, he he nah. can maintain them as a free action. <laughs> Okay. They're like Pikachu's cheeks. He just, you know, rubs his nipples and psychic powers shoot out. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, enough about that. Enough about that. Let's continue. Alright, back on Where? track. Together, the Imperial armies finally crushed the last of the Tyranid swarms. However, not for a moment did the Blood Angels believe that Baal was entirely cleansed of the Sino's presence. There were likely wounded or cut off creatures still hiding in desert caves or buried beneath the dunes of sands and corpses. Really? And who knew how long the countless spores, excuse me, who, uh, which had rained down on the planet would remain dormant before bearing their hideous fruit? The task of hunting down the Sino's remnants fell to surviving tribesmen and neophyte space marines, but finding lone organisms paled against the immense duties no place before Dante. Duties, which the relative lull in hostilities now allowed him to appreciate more fully. So, again, I like how they keep, like, tying in the humans on Baal. Hey, guys, we're too story. lazy. Can you take care of the Tyranid organisms that are probably still here? Uh, wow. Yeah, here's the sword. Go get him, Larry. <laughs> also, I do like the fact that uh, when Tyranids invade and get killed, the creatures that survive just to bury themselves into the ground and go dormant mm -hmm. until another hive mind uh, hive fleet shows up yeah which i mean the gene is... stealers just run off and become patriarchs yeah they like they can do their thing but like the normal gaunts and gants and warriors and and such they just you know go hibernate 
until something shows up to wake him up. Yeah, Which then... for for a game master in in any uh, 40k role playing game is just the perfect lore gift. That damn oh, man. you're going down into this underground cave. Well, let me shake it up a little bit. And ooh, what is this? Tyranids? <laughs> like you know, you all have stuff like you know, like the Kraken on Fenris. That's a Tyranid organism, right? If I recall yeah, it correctly, it like the Kraken is the Catachin or... Devil is. Um, there's yeah, there's a few other Tyranid subspecies that exist. Yeah, like. You, like there are a bunch of species that are like theorized to be a, a, a tyrannids that have just adapted to the planet without yeah. the hive, uh, without the hive mind. Oh. Well, watch. This is how GW is going to put sandworms on ball. Oh no! Yeah, I mean it's literally <laughs> oh, <no>. Dune. <laughs> but uh, jokes aside, uh, the tyrannids going dormant isn't a entirely unknown thing. The problem with tyrannids going dormant is they become Yumgarl, and they gain the Yumgarl factor, which means the Tyranids, the new fleet that shows up, they can't absorb them. So they just destroy them. Ah. Uh, Yumgarl Tyranids, uh, Yumgarl Gene Stealers, for instance, from 6th edition, were nigh unstoppable. They were one of the best units ever, but their lore from that edition, which has been retconned kind of out, but has been added in to certain things as the Umgarl factor, is Tyranids that get left behind don't get reabsorbed. They get destroyed, but they are brainwashed to be used by the Hive fleet that uses them. Yeah. Uh, then... Also, interesting note, it doesn't matter the Hive fleet. The Umgarl, uh, the Umgarl factored creatures... We'll just serve a new high fleet. Hmm. And, and like speaking of like, you know, it just go dormant until another fleet shows up. Isn't that like the entire strategy of your main gander? They just bury themselves in a planet and then just yeah. wait. Yes. In fact, I think, uh, what was it? The Thousand Suns did that where they predicted the future and buried themselves and got into an inquisitorial uh, fortress because they were underneath it. But uh, Tyranids have been seen to do that. In the Devastation of Ball, there were Tyranids that just appeared. Um, hmm. So that's kind of interesting. The Lictor that cut itself open to um, paralyze a Titan was pretty cool. Uh, I think it was a Titan. It might have just been a Void Shield Generator, but I digress. Uh, it's been a little while since I've read that book. But Tyranids doing this kind of stuff is really, really good. And as Victor said, it is a really good for storytelling like i like it yeah it's just this nice little thing to have it it mostly shows up uh, it's mostly used in kai of his cane stories which is really funny yeah mm -hmm. so oh and yeah. gene stealer cults will actually find these creatures and they will revive them and they will use them uh you can see this in uh the actual game death watch when they start you know, using actual Tyranids. Huh. Can't the brute telepathy like function as a sort of mini hive mind? Yes, but it's a a very small one. So chances are, if you get a Carnifex and it gets out of range, it's gonna murder your own guys. It's, it's uh, gonna be. It's gonna be mad. Uh, All right. The Blood Angels and their successors have been mauled. Despite that much-needed influx of primary space marines, no chapter on Ball stood at full number. Even those that were still strategically functional had lost immeasurable tactical strength, including veteran of centuries, ancient and irre irreplaceable war gear, and even many chapter masters. Eleven of like them. Oh yeah, ranged against them were the predatory infestation on the other worlds of the Ball system, and many others spread throughout the Red Scar and its fringe regions. The fate of the Tyranid bio-vessels that had vanished from Baal's orbit remained unknown, we know, but Dante was assured by his blood-weeping astropath, oh, come on! The, the, the... <laughs> Look, the... blood-weeping astropath sounds like a death metal album. <laughs> uh, that no similar disappearances had occur occurred elsewhere. But quite possibly the Tyranids had not even noticed the loss. Their numbers were legion, their hunger limitless. So, yeah, like aside from blood-weeping astropaths, uh, yeah, this is just letting us know that 
uh, the Blood Angels got kind of wrecked and mm -hmm. their successors too. Although I'm not seeing anything where, you know, they hailed to the Ordo Xenos to help hunt down the Tyranids. Yeah, why not just like, call in a bunch of Ordo Xenos Inquisitors and just have them help? But I guess, oh, we're just going to let our tribes people and, and neophytes do the thing for us. Like oh, I said, Larry die. with a sword can take down a hive tyrant. He's got this. He's got a pointy stick. I mean, if he crits often enough, then yeah. All right. Lord Gilliman's reports of the galactic turmoil shocked Dante. Throughout the Imperium Nihilus, numberless terrified worlds were beset by horrors. Who knew how many systems mankind's enemies had already leapt upon, sensing weakness? Wielding the authority of Terra, the Blood Angels were to the, be the Emperor's hand beyond the Great Rift. Dante resolved to make this a gauntlet dripping in the blood of mankind's enemies. Come on! Blood! Blood! <laughs> you, see the, you just see the Blood God in the background just looking at, like, oh, okay. Slanesh walks in. Hey, is everything okay? They won't stop saying blood. Like, seriously, it's getting ridiculous at this point, and I'm the blood of this stuff. I love it. I love it. Uh, the Lord of the Angelic Host gathered his senior advisors and fellow chapter masters. Together, they, de ter uh, they determined that reclaiming the remainder of the ball system must be their first priority. With the home system secure, Dante would then set in motion the Angel's Halo an ambitious plan of reconquest that would strike at three nearby systems to establish them as staging posts for further expansion. Okay, that's just Dante being... Smart. Sensible, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. To support these three chosen theaters, Dante and his fellow chapter masters dispatched forces to fight holding actions and reclamation operations throughout the region, intercepting or delaying Tyranid reinforcement. Dante did not hesitate to call upon the full breadth of his newly conferred authority as the regent of the Imperium Nihilus. If the Red Scar was to survive, the Angel's Halo could not be allowed to fail. Right, so Dante is taking things seriously now. Dante, you essentially have the power of the Inquisition. Dante looks at it. Neat! Neato. All right. Uh, next story... Mm -hmm. uh, next, next part. All right, the spear of the sh uh, the spear of sh uh, no the spread of shadow. Wow, I must be blind. Warzone Ball reeled under the onslaught of the Tyranids. Its thousands of systems writhing as they were consumed. Each prey world was isolated by the suffocating psychic voice of the hive mind. The psychers on those planets tortured to the point of insanity. The Tyranid noises. Angry Tyranid noises. It's just the Meow Mix song on repeat. No! <laughs> or it's Nyan Cat. <laughs> it's Nyan Cat. That's, that's what dri drives Psychers to insanity. Ah, oh, make it stop! Please make it stop! <laughs> Alright. Oh, wow. Is this like one, two? Yeah, this is almost three things without stopping. All right, I, this is the long one, so uh, let's see. The, the Tyranid spread throughout the flourishing systems of the Red Scar, even to those weakly bound to its fringes. An invisible psychic miasma accompanied their advance, a phenomenon the Imperium had long ago learned to fear as the shadow in the warp. It engulfed entire systems, cutting off cries for help and, and crippling the defender's ability to flee. As the Tyranids came to infest the entire region, there was nowhere they were not felt. Astropaths went insane trying to send the simplest of visions. When the Great Rift split reality in the midst of this terror, many psychers in the Red Scar dared to believe that the galaxy was responding to the Tyranids' unnatural psychic taint. <laughs> taint. <laughs> ah, taint. Hmm. So, so yeah, that's just telling you that if you were a psyker in that... Unless you were Mephiston, look, you messed up. Look, like yeah, being mean, a psyker on Ball must have been just the worst during this period. The big oof. The, yes. <laughs> I'm sure there's some planet in the in the Imperium 
that just names the Sikatrix Malik victim as the Big Oof. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> All right. The Imperium fought back viciously against the Tyranids throughout the Red Scar system. The Blood Angels and their successor chapters formed the Blade's Edge in these bloody actions. But the Space Marines were few. Many battle zones comprised only a small number of squads of Sanguinius' sons, supported by Astra Militarum or forces from Forge Worlds or Sacred Shrines. The Blood Angels encountered panic and terror amongst surviving populations. Desperate riots broke out. People screamed uncontrollably and kin fought kin. Trepidation was understandable before the encroaching hordes, but in some cases the violence had to be ruthlessly stamped out. So... Sisters yeah. doing sister things. Yeah. yeah. Just, you know, just sneak in some dead sisters without anybody noticing. I didn't think we would catch you up the Ben counter. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right. In the dead. Deadin? Diadin. Let's. Diadin? Oh, no, not this again. Ah, <laughs> Di- ah Diadin. Let's. Let's use the apostrophe. In the Diadin subsector, the librarians of the Angul Sanguine witnessed this terror spawned violence even amongst their allies. Screaming guardsmen dashed their heads against ferrocrete walls, and Skitari warriors became caught in fevered logic loops, oily blood pouring from their emitters. When the Tyranid's smothering psychic pall fell over a world, even the librarians' fortified minds strained to endure its touch. So... I'm just... I'm just, uh... The Skatari literally leaked oil and blood. So look, some look, some of the Tyranids ran up to the Skatari and said, Can the machine gods craft a stone so big he can't lift? That error does not compute. So <laughs> I use the search function on this PDF to see how many times the word blood pops up. It it's over three hundred and fifty. Oh. oh my god! <laughs> We got to do the same for a wolf for the next one. Yes. It's, the saga, when the saga of the beast comes out, it's going to be great. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, moving on. Also, a uh, nice little advertisement for the uh, start collecting uh, for Blood Angels. Yeah. Right. The Imperium had long known that non psychers felt the Tyranid psychic presence as a shroud of unnatural dread but never had its effect been witnessed to this degree. Stretched as thinly as they were across Warzone Ball, the Blood Angels and their successors could ill afford such bewildering afflictions amongst the ranks of their allies. Yeah, this is interesting. Like, normally non-psychers are just spooked to all heck, but... Yeah, but now, like, you got the Skitari doing the, you know, the blue screen of death, you got guardsmen bashing their heads against walls. Yeah. You got the sisters who are just there. Yeah, you know, just, let's just not mention the sisters so we can sneak uh, more dead past. <laughs> All right. Uh, should I do the the sidebar? Because I can see the tribar the eye of the Inquisition. Let's okay. do that one at the end of this section. All right, all right, all right. So, while the exact source of these disturbing phenomena could not yet be fathomed, a further problem faced the war zone's populations. Since the opening of the Great Rift, the black ships that normally collected tithes of psychers from Imperial worlds had not been seen within the Red Scar. It was rumors that these clandestine vessels employed select navigator houses and operated out of extensive facilities across the galaxy. If they could not reach the Red Scar to remove potential psychers, the consequences for the region might prove catastrophic. Yes, this is just standard black ships fluff, because yeah. if they don't if they don't show up a lot of psychers are going to get uh, uh, start showing. Yes. Well, the thing about the Imperial psychers is the normal mind is not capable of handling psychic powers. A lot of these rogue psychers, they tend to just go insane with power. Mm-hmm. And in yeah. their insanity, they're easily corrupted. That's why the black ships are so necessary. They take them, they bring them to a uh, essentially just a dude that goes... Hey, you're powerful enough. Guess what? You're going to be a Wavering Psyker or a Primaris Psyker. Or you're going to be turned into a Space Marine. Or, or they go, you... hey, you're Battery. Or if you're really lucky, hey, there's this moon called Titan. Go talk to them. They'll help you out. Yeah. 
Yeah. The, the, or you're taken by the Inquisition. Yeah. Usually the Inquisition sweeps uh, sweeps up psychers uh, from the Scholastica Psychana. Or, according to the Inquisition White Dwarf, they just steal them from black ships. <laughs> that too. Which, I honestly, uh, speaking as a uh, part-time Inquisitor myself, uh, I would not want to sweep unsanctioned psychers because those things are uh, just asking for trouble. Yeah, that's um, that's dangerous. Yeah. They, they tend to explode. Remember, kids, always sanction your psychers. Huh? Get your psychers sanctioned. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Speaking of, more and more psychers appeared in the refugee camps to which so many civilians have been shipped like grocks. Each psychic mind represented a threat to the Imperium safety, and the librarians of the Blood Angels and their successor chapters saw their responsibility clearly. If the black ships could not discharge their duty, then the space marine psychers would have to act. Thus, a great collective of librarians took up watch over the refugee psychers, though it tore them away from their duties on the front lines. The librarians tested the minds of as many of the aberrant humans as they could, probing for any psychic weaknesses. Okay, that is pretty cool. That is actually ridiculously cool. Like, I really like that. That is... Yeah. I want more... Like, that could be a book. <laughs> yeah, just from a from the point of view of just one of the psychers being rounded up and one from a Blood Angel librarian. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a pretty sweet book to me. Let's let's see where this goes, because I, I want to I want to see the rest of this. So, <clears throat> it was well that the librarians undertook this work, but its scale was monumental. The level of psychic potential they found amongst the human refugees went beyond anything that could be explained by the absence of the black ships. The librarians uncovered many fledgling psychers struggling to comprehend or control their newfound powers. Once identified, they were isolated and subjected to invasive psychic interrogation to determine the manner of threat they posed. Yet, for every psyker so screened, many others lost control before they could be found. Some were horrified by the acts they committed, whilst others reveled in their unbridled power. So yeah, uh, this is the uh, this, is, this is the opening of the Great Rift, which is like kickstarting uh, human psychers all over the galaxy really the psychic awakening <gasps> oh my i'm actually God. i'm kind of annoyed that the tau didn't get psychers or at least the tau didn't get psychers yet yeah then again like uh, we have to read that book still we, yeah that's... we need to read that book because there might be something in there and it also honestly seems to depend on <laughs> the species it happens to because the Eldar got way more psychic, like way more psychic with this. Humans got way more psychers, and I'm sure uh, actually chaos is kind of the same thing. Like, Watch them bring back weird boy squads. Hopefully. I'd be so excited. I mean, if there's way more weird boys now, then yeah. Weird then boy again, war bands. Then again, there is a chance that there won't be more weird boys, just more powerful weird boys, because the weird boy gene, in, quote, in quotes, that is assigned when they, uh, in the spore, right? Yep. Yeah, so there necessarily wouldn't be more weird boys? Eh. Well, we'll there's, have to s there's weird boys. The weird boy develops uh, when the tribe gets to a certain number. Right. So... Yeah, we'll see. We'll, uh, we'll honestly see in Saga of the Beast. All right. The we can Tyranids... also... Sorry, oh. i got to cut you off really quickly. Oh, that's okay, it's okay. We can also see what happened to the Tyranids. Their Shadow and the Warp got way more powerful. That is true. So, yeah. It t seems that, uh... It seems that, uh, you know, uh, in 40k, like, before uh, the fall of Cadia... When every when forty uh, k was just everything turned up to eleven, well, they turned it up to twelve. They kept going. They brought out another radio. Oh no! Moving on. 
The Tyranids did not fail to notice this unexpected new weakness amongst their human prey. The hive mind observed through the senses of its almost limitless progeny and responded as it always did. With unnatural speed, invasion swarms across the immense breadth of the Red Scar adapted. Soon, Blood Angel strike forces encountered broods of psycho beasts on every battlefield. Veterans of past Tyranid wars had seen the aliens adapt in this way, but usually only in response to pure psychic might of the Adeptus Astartes warrior mystics. Now, Xenos' strange wreaths and coronas of crackling bio-sorcery were reported upon battlefields where there were no librarians at all. To the Blood Angels on the front lines, it seemed clear that the Xenos had sensed the absence of Space Marine psychers and sought to take advantage by harnessing their own psychic might. So, yeah, more... More Zen. zoanthropes and neurothropes. And malanthropes. And malin scepters. And hive tyrants. And Norn mm. Queens. Ye. What are the other psychic creatures? Uh the Exocrine. And that's And it? just And that's just it. the primes, right? Or are they it, just or do they not have psychers? They're not psychers. Okay. Is the Swarm Lord the Psyker? Yeah, the Swarm Lord's the Psyker. It's a yeah, hive tyrant. There you go. More Swarm Lords! Ah! No, there's only ever one Swarm Lord on a battlefield at any one time. <laughs> now there's two. Take parry that, you filthy casual. <laughs> oh, Brood Lords! Brood Lords, of course, of course. Yeah. Oh, and, and Makers is, and. Uh, well, we don't know about a Gene Stealer cult yet. Oh, yeah, we'll see. We'll, see. Uh, yeah. well we can guarantee now. there's a few now, but still. Yeah. yeah. Brood Lords, not Patriarchs. Yet. Oh, yeah, Patriarchs yeah. are. Uh, different all right uh should i just uh uh take out the last two because yeah. there's just a tiny little bit there yeah go ahead all right upon some worlds the imperium was able to counterstrike with sufficient power to prevail against the ravenous tyranids yet such victories were few for often the hive mind's concentrated use of psycho beasts crushed the sanity of mankind's defenders under such creatures baleful gaze un uh, entire squads of guardsmen writhed in psychic torment before dropping as one even the sons of Sanguinius fell, their armor cracked open by lances of psychic witchfire. Every battlefield of Warzone Ball, it seemed, was saturated with the power, the terror, and the unpredictability of the warp. Psychic noises. Psychic Terranid noises. <laughs> Wah! No, that's wrong. <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong species. Alright, let's read the last part. Alright, let's see the sidebar. <clears throat> Post status addendum Z plus B I one ex tenabris dal. As reports make clear, my lady, our efforts to secure new specimens from the Red Scar system have suffered greatly. Even my contacts among the Sinos traffickers and dealers in bio esoterica have been strangely unable to furnish me with viable samples, despite persuasion. Their usual avenues of procurement have evaporated. It is as if the Sinos of the Red Scars are actively avoiding even the most tangential contact with humanity. Our Puritan fellows would rejoice, no doubt. But as a hunter, I need to know what has suddenly marked us out for avoidance by my quarry. I have served the Holy Order for more than a century, yet never have I felt more isolated. Even uh, Never have I felt the immense distance of the interstellar void more acutely. Where once the gaze of my augmentics beheld multitudinous prey, my febrile imagination now casts us as the exposed and vulnerable morsel. Rova Tark, Reclamator Alpha, Ordo Xenos. Transmission or origin, Pergatis. All right. That, that is, is pretty, really cool. That is, a, that is a dark heresy character in the making. So that's a Tyranid hunter. Yeah. Uh, that is just a Xenos hunter, yeah. Experimenting on... Here yeah, he, uh, he, he's trying to get some Xenos uh, samples, but is unable to find any. Also, um, we can talk about the fact that there's Xenos traffickers who are trafficking bodies of Xenos. Yes, yeah. that is very much a thing. And in fact, you have sort of, well, Rosalina has sort of ish come into contact with that. And Car. <laughs> but yes, we have. Yeah, like. Like this even comes up in the Space Marine game, where one of the audio logs you can find from the Inquisitor mentions them experimenting on a lictor mm -hmm. that they just kind of snatched up. All right, so with that, we are going to end the part one of this series, and we'll get back to you in another, uh, next week with part two, starting with the stars red with blood, the bloody blood blood of the Blood Angels.
Wow. Blood for the blood god. I, I, I feel like I need to represent night uh, by ending the video saying, We are born of the blood. Make one with the blood. Die with the blood. I think I may have. Yeah, 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 yeah. The blood. Yeah, you can't I was born it. in it. I did butcher it. I'm sorry. But hey, but... you got the blood right. That's what matters. <laughs> blood, blood, blood. You so. I hope you guys enjoyed this series so far. If you did, please share these videos as we try to grow our lore series. As always, if you did enjoy, comment your thoughts down below or just say blood for the blood god. <laughs> as always, I'm Norn Queen Alexis. I love you guys. Bye.